Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. I have my lovely co-host here with me. Hi, ladies. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. How is everything? We're good. Though. We thank God. Um, thank I'm replacing Nima this morning. Her son is running a fever. Oh. She has to take him to the hospital. So, mm. Hi, it's, guys. It's good to be here. Tell us. Right. It's 22 days. Mm. Two. Those boys, the six boys. Mm. And this is weird. When the rain was pouring yesterday, I just kept thinking, that Father, I just pray they just keep these children safe. They are young boys. Teen. Somebody I mean, asked on Facebook yesterday that, why are we comfortable to just sit down and be looking? This you don't do? look at it. Are we going to go to the creeks? What are we, how, where do we find them? Lagos state government says that they do not negotiate with kidnappers. And someone is saying, but if the federal government can negotiate with Boko Haram to get back our Chibok girls, maybe it a we long time into for the federal government we to don't negotiate. want that we don't want something that long but honestly it's gonna put that if, once those boys are out man i don't know what you want to do to those kidnappers anyway let's see how are you doing jerry talk i know sorry i, I downed the mood but how are you doing i always be back up okay <laughs> I'm i like good. your top very nice thank you it's all about self-love um so jimoke gave me good news yesterday confirmed a surprise artist and this will be for only those that come. We're not talking about it. We're not mentioning the person's name, but it's a she. Oh. And she <laughs> is a songbird. And she wow. just confirmed yesterday. Oh. I'm so excited. God has just been so faithful. Everything has just been falling right in place. Right. Um, right. Thanks to all our supporters and all the sponsors. It's, it's been an awesome journey. Okay. And it's just a few days away. Next, next week, Sunday specifically at the Sheraton Hotels and Tower. We'll be talking about self-love. So if you haven't booked your space, please do so. Okay. Nice. Hi. Well done, <laughs> Well done. Well done. Well I like done. a pair of jeans, the talk Yeah, let me ah, jump. Let's jump. I've not worn it in like two years. <laughs> How are you doing, Jerry? <laughs> and the, <laughs> the yellow fish. <laughs> You've come again. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, you know... I thank God for life. Um, I've been going to the gym and I've been seeing how the, because the, the, the rains have been so um, heavy and so you really cannot do the work, um, the normal work we take. So I've been going to the gym. I've been meeting Madame here, gymming all, uh, gymming all the way. See, talk away with so much energy. I said, ah, <laughs> me, I'll take it slow and steady. Yeah, you go. But, but, but while you look, as in, I see your face now and I see her on TV. People think that Owa is bleaching and I must say it on air. Ah, like I've got a message. She's not. <laughs> as in, she's not even as fair as she looks. Like she's just, you're yeah, like naturally fair. Mm. But they just think that and they pass on this. And because of you, the girls are buying cream. Yeah, she's, she's not buying bleaching. cream. She's a yellow she's fish. She's not bleaching. Naturally yellow fish. Someone sent me a bonnet piece to this one and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, she's they have told us to warn her. Stop, stop using stop cream. cream. And she's name is enough, madam. You don't yellow rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the good thing, I was going even going to come to that because I just realized that when you exercise and you eat right, right, it is a direct um, um, implication on your skin. Yeah. Yeah. So your skin starts Talk to about glow. about the skin scrubbing also. Yeah, that one we did that to one now. But when you exercise, <laughs> you're, you're taking out toxins from true, your system. Very true. So it's very important that all those things work hand in hand. Very true. Right Maya, eating, you, exercise and so everything. So she's not bleaching. Maya, remember when you started walking and all the sweats would clear your face and you yes, looked fairer too. Yes, yes. So exercise, sweating is actually Maya very good. I was like, good. yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, because that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was last year. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't work anymore because I was having my yeah. hip issues. So um, I'm praying to God for a miracle. Yes, so I'm my leg. Oh, no, God has done say, it. if this leg, if God can do this leg for me, oh, I'll go to camp. I say, Father Lord, I am going to say it. The whole world was, in fact, CNN will interview me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, well. let's take a break. When we come back, we'll look at the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the punch. Alleged corruption. EFCC set to reopen probe or CCT chair. Picture here, um, an accident and scene involving a bullion van and other vehicles in Joss. Ex-Governor Oni to declare for a kitty governorship race in July. Uh, Falcons coach Omar Bemi's nephew ordered drown in ex-minister's hotel pool. Oh my mm. goodness, I didn't read that. Um, over 20 killed in Cross River, a communal clash, says residents. Ocean by elections, sheriff presents PDP flag to Adeliki.
Chinese boss cripples Ogun worker hmm. with boy. kung fu kicks. Jeez. <laughs> Federal government hires 7,500 graduates to boost tax revenue. Budget National Assembly tackles Oshibajo says legislature not a rubber stamp. Inflation drops from 17.24% to 16.25%. Evans arrested through sister. Friends statement says friends says, really? Niger Delta militants ask northerners to leave South South. An APC BOT member drowns in FCT flood. Ah. So I think I, I just sat down with um, a drowning punch today. And the sh most shocking of all the stories was um, the Kung Fu. Enkanem. Um, Enkanem is a 27-year-old um, worker. He's a foreman right now, but he started working uh, at bed meets when he was um, well, t 10 years ago. 2007. 2007. And he's grown through the ranks. He said that he just went to buy his usual um, food stuff, bag of rice and vegetable oil. And he's... One of his ogres, a Chinese man called Master Wan, asked him what is there because he doesn't understand English very well. He just said rice chop chop. Uh, apparently, the man felt maybe slighted one way or the other and gave him a kick. And when he said he fell down, and then the man still gave him that kung fu like kick on the floor. And since then, the man cannot walk straight. Are and he serious? said there was an injury to his spinal Jesus cord. Christ. Sadly. He reported this situation to the police and he's alleging that the police officers were paid 50,000 naira because they have not arrested his, um, master, one. his master one. Also, his hospital bill that was supposed to be paid for by Bedmates company, the money that doesn't matter, was deducted from his salary. Hmm. So, I think that this, the, you cannot come into our country, employ our staff. Well, let's not judge yet. I'm, we don't I'm know saying what, that what happened. it should there's, be openly investigated. This thing happened in April, okay, Mariah, right. and nothing has NLC, happened till right. now. In April, early yes. this year. Yes. yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. It happened right. in April. We have, we have NLC. They should investigate. They the should. And if they Any other story? The punch? I was... Uh, Nobody read the... The flood matter. People are drowning. Ah. The, two drown, the two drowning stories here. And you <laughs> said that with Poncho. Eh, sorry, okay, this right. may weather. Moving on to and there's Floyd everywhere. Moving so on to the nation. Oshimbajo's budget remark <laughs> faulty <laughs> says Saraki <laughs> and Dugara. <laughs> um, <laughs> Chief dumps suit against Olubadon Law Review. I'll win Oshun West Senatorial poll. Adeleke says Adeleke. All right, which story are we taking here? Um, I read Nation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, CCT um, Dalari Omar. Oga. Um, he the the allegation against him of collecting ten million naira bribe last was it last year or two years ago? Last 2015. year was this missed? It was two thousand and fifteen, mm. right? April. Yeah. Um, um, the EFCC is going to reopen the case. There are different allegations that his driver collected one million from one person you know here and there and they're going to reopen the case now the story is interesting because just this week the same ccc dismissed saraki okay. and all of and the the papers were saying that the presidency is unhappy with that dismissal now the ESCC is going to reopen a dismissed case over the ccc chair it's a little funny. Look, we just know how our it's judicial all media system trial. is. You know, just Do let me. us move on. Yeah. I beg. I didn't even read that story. For, I'm, 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 I'm not interested. Moving on to Vanguard. <laughs> National Assembly or Shimbajo clash over 2017 budget. I was once kidnapped, but quickly released this Evans. Or Shimbajo meets Emir of Kano, Sanusi, behind closed doors. Inflation eases to 16.25% in May. Um, court okays 14 witnesses against uh, Dasuki to testify behind screen. FG rules out complete deregulation of oil sector. Okay, so Evans is driving. Evans story. Mm. And it was interesting it's because really he said that um, in 2015 mm. also, yeah. that um, while driving in, in the Onija. East, yeah. yes, he was kidnapped by a gun, gun 13 youth and they took him to one bush. Immediately, they started interrogating him. He confidently said to them, I am Evans. <laughs> they did not believe him, but he now said, so who's your guy? They said, ND, meaning Ndubisi. He now said, Ndubisi, he's in, he's in prison in Port Harcourt now. He's serving a long term. They now called in Dubisi. So I do not know that prison has received phone calls. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Dubisi now said, eh, Evans, Quickly, quickly, go and drop mm -hmm. him back where you met him. <laughs> but so he now said that his first kidnapping in Lagos in 2011 was organized by spearheaded 
by Undubisi, right. who is in prison. Mm. This so, is information we can use. Yes. Murayo, I mentioned, I mean, uh, okay, I mentioned the police definitely few, investigating. I, I mentioned a few days ago when he was arrested that um, we shouldn't just they shouldn't just do a beating session. I, I doubt. Him, I doubt that. that the focus should be on milking his resource. How did he organize this thing? Listen, How did he keep them all? And I think it's all coming out. We're not out. the ones that got the police. Give them, give them information to catch Evans. Mm. So we let all also believe and trust that they I know mean, their they, job. They also not us that will tell them their job. You know, but also, you were, let's talk about what the reports are saying. What that the fact that sister. four days to, to the, the kidnap, to the, kidna no, to not the arrest. arrest. He transferred about twenty million to his wife. And you know you were mentioning that why is the story still in the papers and i said it's a good thing because normally before when we hear things like this it, it just goes under down. the carpet but he's i'm excited because even yesterday we forgot to mention that he had he has mentioned about two more um, what's it called holding places that he has in this lagos outside the one that he keeps his victims he has two more places. so he's bringing out a lot of information and, and, I'm, I'm singing. and yesterday um in kaduna state the kaduna um they arrested a kidnapper as well mm. a, a kidnap kingpin in the north so things are happening and i'm excited if about we it. remember that this guy was arrested alongside his wife earlier this year and we never heard about it then it is important that we are hearing about him every right, day right. i want to talk about the um, courts okay in, um 14 witnesses against dasuki now i read the story and i was worried because we, we always this is media trial but we're, we're happy that finally something is happening concerning dasuki's case so we are waiting for the prosecution to be done speedily and a verdict to be given so we know that they better have no longer being held case yes we don't want that we said at Saraka Saraka many living. months wasting court time the judge in um dasuki's case said the last time that the federal government is not um serious about his case because twice the dss refused to bring him to court mm -hmm. now efcc is the one that has a case against him not the dss efcc will say we're not the ones holding him or when they say why are you holding someone that's been granted bail right. but the dss that is keeping him is refusing to bring him to court. to court let's move on to daily sun saraki dogara tackle oshimbajo Mm. We have power to tinker with the budget, says yeah, the I president. And we won't be your rubber stamp, says speaker. Mm. Interesting. Flooded Lagos, uh, Belkuta Expressway, after a heavy downpour in um, Lagos. How Evans defied prophet's warning mm. days before arrest. I read that story. In fact, this Evans just, every day is yeah, a new thing. He keeps singing <laughs> new stories. Shake up as a uh, Navy deploys 21 admirals. Joint South-North leaders meeting holds next week. Government at all levels have failed Nigerians, says Cardinal Okoje. And Anambra, Obiano sets new standards in Niger generation. Before we talk about Saraki and Dugara, let me just give you the evidence on the Evans story. Okay. Um, they said they were in Aspamda. When he went to go and see one of his friends there. And while having a conversation, they were interrupted by a prophet, according to this person that's talking. Mm -hmm. The prophet now said, you need to change your ways and give your life to Christ. That yeah. danger is looming. And you know, you know this the Nollywood movies. They just try to come up with all these stories. I know we can't confirm it, but that was the guy said that a prophet warned him that danger is looming. Better give your life to Christ. And he said he had already given his life to Christ. That I beg, that is that is okay. That he knows and he dismissed the prophet. But now, unfortunately, this happened. Interesting. That's the person's verdict. Okay, let's move on to Dogara. And, that, uh, hey. Dogara, uh, and there are many segments to this. So, mm -hmm. so um, you know that the acting president has said that he's going to the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court yes. to find out if the National Assembly has the powers to, to modify alter yes. our budget. Hmm. Now, they are responding that the fact that we even negotiate with you on some things does not take away our powers, right. you know, to influence things that happen, especially the budget. And they're saying that they have given the um, the executive enough leeway. They are not rubber stamps. You can't yes. take you. We are not toothless bulldogs. You can't take away our powers to do the jobs we're voted right. to do. Right. Two things. I um, um I feel that the National Assembly is powerful because they are representatives of the people's opinion voice in saying that executives should conform with what we desire per time. Mm. If we truly believe that they represent us and our intentions as a people, we wouldn't quarrel with this. Yeah. But we've seen over time that whenever they are doing these actions of changing and adjusting, it's it is thing. personal and into their own pockets. Mm -hmm. So on this case, I, with a lot of other Nigerians, stand with Toshiba Joe in fighting for what exactly is the job but of the national okay, assembly thank god you mentioned that but let, let me go to the fact that if indeed their job is to, to represent us mm -hmm. right now do they have if, if the executive wants to do buy me a pair of shoes for example buy me get me a school and your job is to ensure that the school is top-notch 
has all the right equipment mm -hmm. and cannot advise against the executive. Please make sure it has A, B, C, D, E in it. Also, but it's not their job to execute or to Murayo, change the you. budget That's for the second this. point oh. I was going to. That even when you now say that you are overseen, they, their job is they can operate, they right. can go there and go through it. But most importantly, they should say that right. maybe you, did not, you, should, you should include pumping machine right. in this school. Not that you should say, give me money. So put pumping machine in my school, they in the school, that, in my area. That's no, but that's the easy projects. They're all right, projects. Let's, 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 let's right. that gets Do they funded. have legislative offices in their constituents that people that they are representing can go to and write them notes and say, this is what we want? We have one here. They don't have offices. They have Do they have offices? Unfortunately, we, we need to make it a hot topic. I think yes, we need please. to really di dissect mm. this. All right, that's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, the impact of today's music on Nigerian youth. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. A recent interview with veteran actor Patrick Doyle while explaining the impact of entertainment and pop culture in our society. He made reference to Davido's song 30 billion for the account. Uh, saying that the slogan is not a good message to pass across to the Nigerian youth. He went further to explain that singers who are con con conscious of the message they pass with music are needed and that the singer, that is David o, although not aware, might have caused an insatiable want in the minds of Nigerian youth who might actually engage in desperate measures to make such money. So we ask you, what are your thoughts? on today's Nigerian music. Do you think it's doing more harm than good? It's your view. Let it count. You can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. It's interesting that we're talking about this today because our, our celebrity guest actually is a, has, is a veteran and has songs that actually has serious meaning. So I'll probably be, I'll ask him the same question when he comes on. But what are your thoughts on what Patrick Doyle said? Um, Patrick Doyle is saying the obvious. We have known this for several, several years, and the only reason anyone is taking notes is because it's the veteran who is saying it this mm. time. But I thought about it, and this is my own conclusion. Um, why have we drifted to the era of um, shake bomb bomb music rather than music that passes a message? It's because as our parents grew up, they stayed with their generation of music and they weren't buying, you know, the CDs of the new artists. So if you are an Iyaya, you are doing readings and blues and nobody is buying, but the day you do shake, 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 the people who, are, who have the buying, the power. buying power, which is the uh, guys on the streets, the drivers and the conductors who are playing the music and they, that's the kind of music that they want, then you will find that over time, your genre or your music will tend towards that right. because you want to make money. Okay. You just don't want to be singing a song that everybody says, fantastic music, mm. but nobody buys. Now, for those that don't know this song, let us take a... Seriously. Let's, let's, let's see the song or let's hear the song so you can know what we're talking about. My money, my body, now your own. It's a video. If I tell you, say I love you, oh, my money, my body, now your own, oh, baby. Party billion for the account, yo. Yeah. Versace and Gucci for your body, oh, baby. No, do, no, do, no, do, gotta, gotta for me. Thirty billion, indeed. So, like, Raya, yeah, I, like, I, had, I mean, I have hundred billion. So, <laughs> Raya, we've had many artists that had nothing, nothing, and they come on TV and say, "I'm performing in Malaysia, I'm performing in Ghana, I'm performing all over the world," and few months down the line, that becomes their reality. So, I think some of the artists see, have become, are beginning to see this as a power of confession. Prophecy. I prophesy my story into past. We have Ombu Smith <laughs> when he sang that his first song, he had nothing. But he kept saying he is big. 
It is God. He is big. It is God. And it became a reality. He's performing everywhere. So I mean, there's a the part of is it not schooling in there's a, a part of those that see it as this is the life I want to live. When I say it, say it, say it, people think it and they begin to associate me with being wealthy and they would um, offer me the kind of wealth that I want to have. But regarding the morals behind the song, and I'll go, I'll go back to it. If there isn't a customer, there will be no market. Yes, yeah, sir. So there, uh, there is a, th there's a thriving audience that are, they are buying this thing. They are buying ones that are worse than this. This is even just 30 billion. They are buying the ones that are saying lurid things. Yeah. And they are buying into it. So we need to solve okay, the problem okay. of Let me two things. Yeah. Our, our desire for wealth, regardless of how it comes. Materialism. Our materialism and raising awareness on morals. Mariah, we used to have songs. Ebenezer Obey, Magba Yawo, Re. You have Sonia Day singing about... Chokwe, chokwe, like, chokwe, you, chokwe, those chokwe. are songs that would same, give you lessons. The same rationale that makes people flood to churches and mosques. The same rationale that yeah. makes people actually buy these things because prosperity. people are looking for hope, prosperity, change. They want something. So if you don't go to church, you buy music to make you feel as, as though feel good. You you feel good, and you know that in the next forget few your moments, you, yeah, forget your worries, and you can you can do the same music, and you can get rich, you can get you can buy a house in Banana Island, you can do this. So it's the same thinking. So the real the root cause of this. It's not so much of 30 billion. It's poverty. It's the real poverty. That's the, that's the real crux of this conversation. But let me let Uwa come in here. You know, because you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, I think Patrick um, Doyle, yeah, he's a veteran, but I think he's not woken up to reality of what the youth are facing today. <laughs> in the papers this morning, right, the federal government is employing 7,500 youths. And graduates. To the graduates, right? According to the reports, these people will go knocking on the doors of um, citizens to tell them, pay your taxes. I mean, I don't know why I'll go to school for four years, five years, some courses. I graduate and I have a degree, I have a certificate, and all I'm, I am... My brain I, is my, my brain, My brain is cop, uh, capable of doing is going to go and ask people to pay taxes. So, you see, dignity it is not so labor. much... No, 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 no. Hold on, no, no. hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not issue of dignity in labor. If you're going to... If, if we want to solve the problem, you already said it, is a problem that is deep-rooted in poverty that we have today. That's our, reali uh, that's our reality. So you cannot just wake up and say that, don't put those kind of lines into music. Right. Do you understand? Right. There's a problem. May I Nigeria is a problem. <laughs> I'm telling you, he is solving a problem. Because you see, in that... In that video, he's trying to woo a girl and he's telling the girl that he has 30 billion in the account. That tells me one thing, that the girls of today, if you do not have money in your account, of course they will not follow you. Yes. So there are so many issues, so many angles to look at it from. Okay. Yeah. So you can't just wake up and say I'd that, like to, don't throw those lines. Okay. I'd like to quickly disagree to say that if every Nigerian youth was educated, who do the dirty jobs? Right. Somebody's got to do it. There's dignity in labor. And, yeah. But if we have a system in which... If you knock on doors for one year, you are able to save or you get a promotion and then you move to an yes, office yes, yes, and, and people start to even celebrate people like that. Right. Then we will not all be looking to go and do music because I'm looking for 30 billion. Fantastic. And girls see such people and they're willing to marry them because this one does not want to steal or become right. an Evans. Exactly. We must encourage let them. Me, let me answer you, okay? I have a company, a very huge real estate company that decided to do this door-to-door -door knocking on the door. In recent times, the number of people that he has employed and the amount of money he pays them, I don't have a problem with you telling me to go and knock on the doors. It's if you would value my time enough and value me enough and appreciate me enough to pay me what I deserve. Yeah, because if I bring in this money to you, would you as a federal government be comfortable to pay me like a hundred or a hundred and fifty thousand? No. Wow, you would rather put 30, me on thirty thousand naira salary and expect me not to steal or expect okay. me not to go and go and go and go into armed robbery okay, or whatever. Okay. All right, point again. Um, I wanted to just add two more um, to this issue. Can um, I pause you for a second? Okay. Sam Ali from o o Judo, are you still there? Good morning. Morning, Where thanks for calling. Good morning, my fellow sisters there. Yeah? Good morning. Good morning. Yes. I think the, the uh, music now has nothing to offer the Nigerian youth or the, the public generally. In those days when you listen to music like me, I used to tell people, Fela music, what I mean Fela music is the beating. And when you listen to a, 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 a music, you know this is Fela. Now, like the ones I just play now, kids in my house here, five years old, I called them the other day, sing me this song. I had to call them and say, who taught you this? Say it's my mom and my dad. They play it in their various uh, rooms. 
and on their phones. It's not because there is no work. Right. I don't blame them. It's because they, uh, uh, they put it in the market and people are buying it. If there's nobody buying their music, all right. Stop. Point taken, yes. Samali. Yes. Talk about what it is on the phone. Um, no, just, just to say that um, the people that are buying have a problem. They would buy it because it makes them feel good. We have too many issues around us not right now. We just want something that will take our mind off it and make us think differently. Also, the politicians are seen to always exploit ha. the fact that these people have influence. Yeah. And even though the song does not make sense, you bring them to rallies and events and they are singing such songs. Mm. We are not promoting those that are singing sense. We are promoting those that are just popular for popular sake. Yeah. We can use the money that we have, as, as, right. as in terms of politicians have, to support the ones yeah. that are singing sense and encourage them. Let's so we have on people doing that. Shono Aiki says, the music that are being sung by hip-hop artists are passing good messages to us. They're teaching youth corrupt things. Deji says, is Sheikh Bomb Bomb not an important message? <laughs> if you have it, be bold. Flaunt right. it. <laughs> All right. They are fairly confident. As, as, as Stop has always said, the struggle is, I mean, the hustle is real. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to focus and be listening to Sheikh Bomb Bomb, and don't go ah. and, and struggle and hustle your way and make sure that yeah. you put food on your table. But, um, but generally... Let's choose what influences us. Let's try to pay attention to those things that influences our, ju our judgments as a young as, as a youth, as a Nigerian youth, because there are real problems out there to be solved. Mm -hmm. Very true. Let's take a break. When we come back, our celebrity guest, a veteran, takes the couch. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So, veteran Jimmy Sholanke, popularly known as Uncle Jimmy, is a veteran actor, musician, poet, prolific songwriter, and has performed to audiences in America and Europe telling them the African stories. Armed with an expressive face and the baritone <laughs> voice, Sholanke <laughs> is renowned for his uncanny ability to tell stories moving brilliantly and convincingly between characters and settings. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good to have you on. Right, so... Thank you very much. I'm uh, proud to be on Thank the view. You. Thank <laughs> right, you. Right, you, you heard our conversation during the Hot Topic concerning um, the video's 30 billionaire claim in his song, which we believe a lot of young people are listening to. And uh, Patrick Doyle has a problem with that, saying... It's shaping the it's, it, it, it could shape, negatively shape the minds of our, our youth. Do you agree? And what, what's your take on Nigerian music today, especially those that, that young people are churning out every day? I will say in a one shot that uh, we have uh, musicians now who are faking lifestyles from mm. all over the world. Mm. Mm. So when they are talking about 30 billion naira, maybe they've gone through some earnings about two, three million dollars. And you know, with the economic rating, a million dollar, you know, in the hands of all those young men mm. is equal to billions. Right. And when they open their mouth to sing such songs, they are basking in the euph euphoria of having been exposed, expressed, I am not going to fight them because there are for everything time, time, time. Mm. Even if uh, the hip hop continues, there will be some younger persons coming from some decent homes trying to sing songs for themselves, but the songs will be definitely be totally, you know, full of messages of uh, development, messages of right, uh, okay. right thinking, that? yes. The hunger is real, right? Because you see, um, the younger generation today, they see the veterans and they see the way the, the, some of them have been abandoned, some of them are not living well. And you know, they've looked at it and said, no, my own life, cannot be like this. Be like I want to do this. And that's why last week you guys talked about, um, was it Dami Crane that was found with credit mm. card, uh, card fraud? So it, we see a lot of younger generation because it, with all the morals that was preached in your generation, 
we did not see anything change money some people just sit on this um, wealth and it's not it's not being circulated so you see them they aspire to, to you know to to live a different life you know they are uh, aspiring so do you think that i mean that, that that aspiration is wrong for them to 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 want something more better and sing the kind of songs that would earn the money the bigger box that they want yes uh, when you're talking especially about hip-hop mm. All over the world, when it's hip hop, even in India, even in uh, UAE, where a young lady you now stands on top of a of a car yeah. and starts I singing, saw that. all the messages there are just on prosperity, mm. uh, how to go about Natural it, uh, uh, sexually, uh, materially, uh, and otherwise. I'm not blaming them. We have been at it. We have remained. You, 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 cannot, you cannot say we have not tried. Not having that amount of money does not mean anything to me. Right. Because what is important is you are recognized. Mm. Number one, once you are recognized, you have so much money than in trillions. Mm. They That's might not value. know that. So for them to look at the economic situation in the country and the approach to the running of the nation, then um, uh, and package themselves right. into making millions, I'm not blaming okay. them. All right, mm. Uncle Jimmy, um, I heard you sing at um, YK's birthday party last year. It was, f as in your voice was phenomenal, and it still is. I wonder when you see what is going on right now, and that you've mentioned here that you feel success is in the fact that you've accomplished and you acknowledge for what you've done. Yes. How have you duplicated that success in many others? How have you mentored people into seeing the value, not in money making physically, but in leaving a legacy that is worth it behind? If you check my record, I have so many people who have, uh, who I have, who have gone through my tutelage. Mm. Yeah both in uh, acting, in uh, music and band creation, in, in all, I, I, can, I can reel out names of different bands mm -hmm. outside of Lagos, because right. I don't live in Lagos, I live in LA. I mm -hmm. work for OAU and I retired okay. in the premises of IFE. I can reel out names of boys who performed with me and are now big, mm. big in their own band management. Right. Mm. I can read out names of people who just stayed in my house and became actors of repute. Right. Mm. I can name people <coughs> who in just one year that I was able to teach them right. acting that became good actors mm. and they are still there till date. Fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Um, I'd like to go all the way back to the beginning right and um, mm -hmm. you have said that it's not about money making for you it's about your passion for music you were called <laughs> jimmy go and sing <laughs> by god there are many musicians today who are who are not sure if they were called or is the uh, they are running away from them. poverty <laughs> that is making them go into music but you're educated you know you read drama in the university of ibadan um, you went abroad, you formed your theater African group, Review. African Review, you formed your musical um, group, Akerba, um, what's the name again? The <laughs> <laughs> um, you're finding for buckets. Koroba. Koroba. Jesus Christ. Even I knew that. That was, <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> Koroba bucket. That was yes. the reason when I was in school. Yeah, yeah, when you used to drum with your steel bucket. Yes. yes. And so, um, as much as your uncle wanted you to read engineering, right? You said that you did not like that you would wash your hands with petrol and all of that. You started hanging around the likes of Wale Shoinka and acting in Ola Balogun's you know you became a fantastic actor because your director at the time said to you that you're better an actor than a musician a lot of you today do not have that kind of mentorship they're not sure 
there, there are musicians who have been there for years. They are not making headway. They are not making the 30 billion and they're sticking to it. How did you discover that rather than do this, which is engineering, which would have made money, you know, it is music, stick to it. And even if you don't have 30 billion in your account, you will never go poor. Okay. <laughs> because when I was still in school, I was already a songwriter. Mm. And I wrote songs even when I was in the secondary school that big bands recorded. Roy Chicago recorded my song, Oro Mare Ara Dubu. I wrote it when I was still in school. Yeah. Look at the veil. You will see Jimmy Sholanke under the title. Yeah. I wrote Kakin of the Leather. Yeah. I wrote Oreti Ton. Yeah. All, all these tracks for Roy Chicago. Yeah. Then I wrote Jen Rock huh, for Rex Williams. Yeah. I had a stint with uh, Orlando Julius where we composed a lot of songs. And you see, when, even when I was being, my name was being mentioned on the radio, Onilego Guru by Jimmy Sholanke, when I was still in school. Yeah. Yeah. So you can so you imagine. Started, exactly. you so you started, you found yourself. Where where you Let, let's take, for, the, for those that don't know his, uh, some of your work, let's take one of your work here. Okay. All right, we're going to go on a quick break, but um, I wanted to you to tell, tell, tell us about your storytelling, storytelling yeah, okay. around California, the, around the world, <laughs> trying, telling the African story. We're going to go mm. because we don't hear that a lot these days. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. So we're talking about storytelling. Story line, going storyline, line, line of music, fun and tell storyline, storyline. Bring, bring your, your friends, friends along. <laughs> Ooh, that was, that was Uncle Jimmy at the end. We all grew up with that song. Yes, yeah, so. Right, so storytelling, sir. Tell us, it started in California. How, how, how was it? How did you come about the idea, the concept of telling the African stories around the world? Hmm. Yes, I got into California. And they were hungry for African uh, cultural Content. materials. The very first opportunity I had in Los Angeles was a please tell us some African stories, please, man, 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 man tell us some African uh, <laughs> traditional stories, man. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> So I got there and I told them the story of Ijakwa Baba Lawo Moa Bebe. And then they said, well, one more, one more. Uh, I told them, Fere Kunfe. I told them all that. One more. I'm going to do my time. Fere Kunfe. At the end of the day, I was whisked away by some people who said, no, you must be in our group, you must be part of us. Oh. Uh, eventually, I ended up in Pasadena. Mm. From Pasadena, I joined the Lake Street uh, Theater Group, acted then. One of the members of the group said, ah, they would like you to tell all the stories you are telling oh, in so many other places. That's how it grew. Until mm -hmm. the Los Angeles School uh, District body right. started giving me 
five schools in a day, wow. six schools in a day, to go and tell stories. In fact, that's where I developed the attitude of storytelling. Wow. So when I came back was when a television station came and recorded a program we had at the Unilag Staff Club premises for their children. The first two episodes were from that program we had at the oh. Unilag. And then it was called Family Scene. Any B, any A, a G, B, a G, a tan tagba, a warroco, bamba, a re water, your laye, a ro, wow, wow, so that's how. Because I feel it's a nostalgia. Oh my goodness, <laughs> what happened to us? So, I want to ask in terms of um, providing solutions to the issues that we have, mm -hmm. societal issues today. Uh, what do we as a people, government and the citizens need to do, right, to encourage more young people to follow in your stead? Because you are not a billionaire by <laughs> any standards, you know, in terms of money in your account, but you are a billionaire in terms of you are satisfied with mm. your work right. and your career. You know, and so what do we need to do to get in, back to that? In, in adding to that question a bit, sir, just add to her question. How can we use arts yes, the right culture. way? Because you sang all the songs now and we're all, we're having that nostalgic feeling. Kids today don't have that. I, mean, I feel like they've lost, I feel like my children have lost out in this storytelling, in this Ijakpa stories. Moral So, stories so how moral. do we, just as you say, today, how do we infuse this arts into our cultural so standing, our moral standing today? Uh, we are setting up a situation where we will do all this free of charge. Can mm. you imagine that? Mm. Mm. But uh, charity beginning at home, mm. we are setting up from my hometown. Mm. Especially if in two weeks now when I am 75 years. <laughs> so we are you know, gathering some young men and women who I can put this venom into hmm. so they can spill it out right. just like I do. Mm. Right. Because I must give back to where I originated from. Mm. Fantastic. That's part of the things we are planning. Okay. And there are a lot of things like, uh, you know, releasing storytelling albums. Right. Please. We need Let me quickly take this call from Sam. Sam, are you still there? Yes, yeah, sure. Thanks sure. for calling. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, good, good morning. morning. Let me, let me uh, breach the protocol and start by gi giving the best good morning to Pa Jimmy Post. Mm. Good morning. Thank good morning. You. Thank you. <laughs> good morning, sir. Good Thank morning. Good morning to you, ladies. You do wonderful yes. job. Thank you, sir. Uh, look, you can only invest what you plant. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to believe uh, we all human beings does have you know, hierarchy of me, and you get to a point, you say, look, this is my self-actualization. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing Pai Jimmy at that level already. Okay. okay, what gives him the ultimate satisfaction is not what gonna give Davido and the other guys. Right, guy fantastic. Satisfaction. That's it's so unfortunate. Very, very, very unfortunate. Yes. All right. Oh, okay. Thank and you very much, Sam. We have to. We, we, we need to. We need to sing. sing. No sing. Okay. No more questions. Ah. That song. Oroye muko alone shemi. That's the one. Would you be? <laughs> we would like to hear that. Okay. Okay. A long time ago, when the Benders was under Kuru Tujiolano, oh. we used to sing this song. Okay. Wasn't you? Mulo soku mubuluoko. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> One name, one memo. Oh, no, I am gone. Modem, we go, Mobolu, or Mobolo, Lufemi, sorrow. Only wag, 
Fantastic. We have to rush up. But <laughs> well, I can't let you go without you saying something. Singing something for the ladies. I mean, I know you can come up with something for us. Something. Give a, a TV thing. Something on your view. Bogbolomo, Bogbolomo. Iba jokuni, Bogbolomo. Iba jokuni, Bogbolomo. Omo lomo sheo. Omo lomo sheo. Ewagbo. Lo de iwo yi. Koso unta kuni she. Tobi ni ole she. Yes, Ken. Bogbolomo. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Um, David says, fond memories with Paji Mishulake, how I reminisce of my childhood days, the same generation of our time. <laughs> Omolaja says, Jimmy Shulake, the great veteran of African folklore and music. Our children need to get familiar with our historical Fantastic. Liberation. Thank you so much Thank for being so here. Much. Thank we you so much. We enjoyed your being here. God All bless right. you. That's a wrap on the show today. Join us again next week for another exciting episode on Your View. Have a lovely weekend. See you then on Monday. Bye-bye. <laughs>